Where are all my friends? Mark Arsenal. I can't believe this. I, when I started this podcast, I had the intention to talk to my friends and talk to people that I was inspired by and that had cool lessons in really anything, I guess mostly music, but just anything entrepreneurial and people that have grown things that they believe in and do things out of their passion. And to call this a full circle moment is an understatement. Like growing up, always being in the cars, I was looking on Tumblr and anything before Instagram, and I was always influenced by this one. I would always see this little tag, this little fat lace tag, and I'd always see these things, and I'd always save these photos, and I didn't know that that was you for a long, long time. And then as things continued to develop and grow, Illust, fat lace, all these brands, I'd see them everywhere. And John Herrera, massive shout out, connected these pieces. And now I'm here talking to somebody that has inspired me through a better part of a decade of design and inspiration and business. So I can't begin to thank you for joining me on this. This is, this is crazy. Sweet, man. Uh, nice to meet you. It was, it, yeah. It's awesome. It's an honor, definitely. Yeah, dude, it's it's like it's really cool. And I love like something that I'm always so encouraged by is the people like yourself who continue to pay it forward. And it's like you're in a position in your life right now, like you don't need to come on podcasts and you don't need to do this and that. But I think something that I see in you as I've paid attention to what you do is it really feels like you gravitate towards doing things that you're passionate about and just being like a quiet, rad, kind dude. So I'm always inspired to see people accomplish such levels of success yet stay so level-headed. So hearing about you and your story and all of that is something that I'm so excited to get into. Oh, sweet, man. Um, I think the funny thing is, is you don't realize how many things you've done <laughs> until you've actually take a, you know, taken a step back and look at um change you know and i think when when people recognize you after that you're just like well i didn't even realize like you moved so many people in so many aspects of their lives it's pretty funny yeah it's always like that like the almost like the second thought of it it's like you're doing something that you're passionate about and you just have like your eyes or your sights set on a goal you accomplish it. And then later on, people come to you and they're like, hey, oh my God, this inspired me like crazy. And you're like, what? wait, what? Yeah. You know, or it's funny. Least, is, um, yeah. I, had a, um, I had a person DM me once and asked me to look over their resume because they were going to apply for Nike, right? And I said, I haven't been at Nike for a long time, but I could definitely look at your resume and kind of point you in the right direction and maybe you know, introduce you to some people I know over there. And now this person's huge at Nike, which is awesome. You know, it's like to Whoa. know that they've, yeah, they've been there for so long and, and they're doing it, you know, it, it's very impressive and, you know, super stoked for them. Yeah. There's always that element of paying it forward, right? Like once you've kind of like carved out your lane, seeing the people that you believe in then accomplish success is like this whole other wave of excitement. It yeah. seems like you've yeah. done that well. Oh yeah. I mean, who whenever anyone asks me anything on um, whether it's a DM or email or even a LinkedIn message or something, I always reply. Um, I have, I don't think I've not, not replied unless they try to message me on Facebook and I, I don't really do Facebook. So yeah, same. but I can, and I can speak to that, right? Like John introduced us and you were so in touch and so kind to literally a stranger, right? Like we barely have talked up until now. Yeah. And I'm curious, like, where do you, uh, how do you set the time aside for that? Cause I'm sure you're getting hit up a lot. Um, it's funny. Cause I, I feel like I'm, I'm not busy, but I, I know I'm busy every single hour of the day, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, like for this, I definitely, um, set aside, um, an hour or two just to make sure that I'm, and I tell everyone that I'm busy during this time. So don't bother me or text me it, you know? Yeah. yeah. But like I'm saying, like, just, uh, have you found a system to respond to DMS or emails or texts or LinkedIn messages? Like that's, that's gotta be something like, you know, that's time in your day to do that. Like that's, oh, yeah, that's yeah. not nothing. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think whenever I'm, I I know that I feel like I have like a five minutes to kill. I'll definitely look at things and just try to catch up during the day nice. because um, my 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 biggest um, I have this thing about seeing numbers on my phone. Like if there's like twelve messages or 
whatever, I have to yes. make sure it says there's no messages. So I'm, I have I'm that. very, yeah, I'm very into that. And, um, but if I did that with email, I, it's like 70,000 messages. So I, I don't even do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I feel you. I, somebody once called it like the red dot syndrome or something like that. And I was it, like, it, I it, have that. Yeah. Oh, that's I, bad. I have it. It's so bad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Man. Okay. So before I get too ahead of myself, I want to talk about like for the specific subject of this episode, it's almost hard to to do an, a podcast with someone like yourself because you've done so much. There's so many topics that we could talk about and you've been on a lot of other shows. So I don't want to cover things that have already been covered, but I think what would be really interesting to talk about is just what you're currently up to and where you see the future of things going. And even like brands like the two brands that you're very, very commonly tied to and known for is Illust and Fatlace and kind of the what's been happening with that lately and everything there. So before we get fully into that, for a listener who doesn't know, like the super brief history of oh. Mark leading up to that. And you can yeah. you can make that. Oh, you okay. make it however I'll, you I'll want. Do it in, um, I'll do it in 12 words. No, I'm just joking. Okay, um, okay. hey. So uh, basically, um, I was a designer at first, you know, like uh, I graduate as a uh, interior designer at like commercial design. So that's oh, wow. kind of why I, I'm always posting about homes and architecture. Cause I'm just like still way into it. I just haven't ever gone that route. Right. But I got into design. I just started with my own sign sticker machine. You know, I started putting stickers on everyone's cars and it was pretty cool. Um, then I decided uh, during college, maybe I should make this a business. But at the same time, my dad said, uh, when you graduate, you probably want to get a real job, right? <laughs> but I said, yeah. well, I'm making actually really good money, but... Um, just off stickers. It, just off stickers, you know, like wow, what people do now with uh, cars, it's kind of crazy. But um, the, the funny thing is um, my dad kind of encouraged me to, to take a, a real job. And I think that's kind of where I went from designer to art director to senior art director to junior creative and creative director you know what i mean i i kind of moved my way up from um i worked at the gap first and then i went into advertising and i went um i started working in advertising agencies and from there you know to climb up is pretty it's not easy but if you're dedicated and if you're there working 14 hours a day they're definitely going to see that right so so basically um I was in advertising. I, I was in maybe three or four different advertising agencies. Yeah. And at that time, um, I, I had fat lace, right? Fat lace was kind of one of these things where I just kind of put my, my ideas and things that I see around the world and, and put it on this blog, right? At the time it was a blog, right? I don't, yeah, it was a blog. Yeah. Cause it was, you started that 99, right? Yeah. 99 yeah. is when I started it. Um, it was all about hip hop, break dancing, just music, you know, everything that I was into. And I'd get into free shows and I'm like, oh, this is a great way of getting into shows, you know? Like, Damn, so you were into music too? Yeah, super into Dude. music. Uh, I was a DJ. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Like, I feel like there's this like common glue of like that alternative scene of like cars, music, mm -hmm. art, or streetwear, like any type of fashion, yep. like some people in skateboarding. Like, it's like the all these like, things and we somehow all tie back to it definitely it's crazy you know like i was a dj um we bought our first turntables uh from radio shack what back in the day and um what yeah eighth grade man like and and then from there i just kept djing i thought it was the the, the coolest thing you meet so many people and make everyone excited about what you're mixing you know yeah and, uh, yeah no it's cool so then i kind of like with fat lace, it, it was like I created, you know, and I was into shoes as well because that's the name. That's where fat lace comes from. Right. And, um, I created this little, uh, design thing that where, um, flash was really popular back then. I don't know if you know mm -hmm. what flash is. Mac Macromedia. I do. I Adobe do. Yeah. Right? Um, I created this like sneaker design contest where you can switch the panels up. It was like basically Nike ID. And, and whoa but like way back way back and and nike kind of uh, hit me up they're like oh we want to do a contest with you i'm like yeah sure we could use my air force one switcher upper thing right color switcher thing <laughs> and they and then we did a contest on my on my my blog back then and i don't know i feel like we were the first hype piece you know and and from there 
Nike invited me on to to visit their campus because I was in Adver- um I think I was at Ogilvy at the time. Mm-hmm. I went there, um, and they just basically hired me, you know, from from because of the things I've done in the past, which is pretty interesting. I feel like so I'm in the same place right now. <laughs> that wait, what do you mean by that? Oh, because um, because now that. I decided to kind of like move on from Illis and Fat Lace. I'm yeah. still going to be like their kind of overall visionary. Um, oh, you know, yeah. And, and um, another company decided to pick me up and I'll be doing some really cool stuff with them. So it's very like a cool. very full circle moment of like having done stuff with Nike way back and then still yeah. keeping that relationship and then like doing even more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think. I don't know. I'm just super excited. I'm, I'm very humbled by the opportunity. You know, like I've actually tried to look for other positions and, you know, automotive and things, trying to figure out what I want to do for my next chapter in life. And I don't know, this is cool. I'm super, super excited about my next, my next move. Oh man. Really okay. So then we're about to get into that. Cause that's like, that's what I want to talk about. But then to fast forward that. And like the one question there is, that Nike moment at first had to have been crazy, right? Like that had to have been one of the most validating things to go from all these other companies to then be like, oh yeah, the pinnacle ever heard of it? Nike? Like, were you just like losing your mind then? I think, I think, um, I lost my mind when I realized I was going to move to Oregon and say, oh man, uh, I've collected 300 pairs of these shoes and I'm ready I'm going to be working at this company, you know, and I think it was really exciting Mm -hmm. at the time. It was new for pretty much our, everyone that was uh, going in to build this thing called Nike sportswear. And I think um, just launching it and creating that brand uh, for them was a really, really great experience. Dude, that's so crazy. And in that moment to, to quickly like paint that picture so you're doing that. You had fat lace on the side. You're still adding to. Oh, I was just supposed to have fat lace on the side. That's oh, funny. funny. Yeah, yeah. So I basically, uh, at the time, and I know my friends at Nike know this, but um, I had to sell the brand to my friend and uh, my wife. It was under their name and stuff because oh, you can't yeah. have a brand while you're at um, a big corporation and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's like that with a lot of, like, I think it's even outside of like Nike and like, I've heard of friends with at like record labels and stuff like that. Like if you're yeah. at like a big, big company, they're pretty much just like, Hey, do yeah. this. Yeah. Um, yeah. okay. So then, well, man, one question is, was there a, did you have like a, a moment? Cause I know both of us are such car people. Yeah. Um, did you, you were collecting sneakers and all that you were into cars for a very, very long time, right? I think yeah. I, a past interview, you said your first car was an E30 BMW. Yeah, yeah. That was my, my mom gave that to me. <laughs> yeah. But it's did not you like have she a wanted moment? to. We just happened to have a BMW. That was just the car. Yeah. Was but did you have a moment, like you get the job at Nike or maybe it was even sooner. Like what was your first like flex up moment with a car <laughs> where you're like, yo, I got to get this or like yeah. something like a poster car becomes a reality. I think, um, I think that's the first time I ever bought a Porsche back then. Yo. Yeah. I bought a nice when you, sport. When you got the Nike job? Yeah, not right oh when God. I got it. Uh, after we lo- uh, actually, I bought it on Christmas. I, I I put a bid on eBay, um, and I won after we got back from the the party. And I was like, "Oh my God, how am I going to pay for this?" Oh, <laughs> how much was a nine six four back then? Oh, it was cheap. It was. <laughs> it's funny because it was I think seventeen thousand bucks. What? <laughs> For all of the listeners that aren't into cars, I'm sorry that you don't understand how mind blowing that is. And for anybody <laughs> that is listening that understands cars, that's a crazy thing to laugh about right now. Yeah. What is that, a clean 964 now? Can you get one for less than like 60? I think 60. Yeah. 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 Wow. Okay. Very cool. I love that. And I very much wanted to know that. And that is such a great car to get as like an early celebration. So then Nike and I guess the only other part that I want to cover before we get into the current is you accidentally almost had the success that you did with Illust, right? That ended up bringing you away from Nike. 
Well, I think what what Illis was uh, was kind of like because Nike was I was I was done with Nike, and I had uh, some money from Nike. <laughs> I basically mm-hmm. put all that in and created and and amplified Illis. You know, because mm. I launched Illis in um, while I was Nike, but I wasn't really focusing because I had to. You know, we had a real job. But yeah, it was very much I, just like the side thing that came along with Fat Lace, and you just yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so basically, Fat Lace was selling Nike. I know Fat Lace was selling Illis products, and um, you know, it was like little things here and there. But I, I noticed the uh, the crowd was really into it, right? Yeah. So um, after Nike, I decided to go full time on that and just push it real hard. Was that a scary moment leaving something as established um, as Nike and kind of like uh, that <clears throat> tipping point of like, damn, I'm doubling down and going all in on myself? Yeah, I think um, I didn't think about that. That's the the funny thing. It's like you don't think about these things because you see the momentum there. And I think after the second year uh, sales, I was like, dang, this is a good move, you know? Safe. And then we just kind of just tried to parlay everything. But at the same time, we grew so fast. You know, like I think after three years, we had maybe five stores. And I was like, man, this is a lot. This is a lot to manage right now. You know, one store is hard enough, but multiple stores in different cities was was super difficult. And 300 accounts later, you're like, this is crazy, you know? Dude, did you like, was that a challenge to find the infrastructure to build that and scale that? Like, did you quickly be like, I need a guy that understands retail or like putting stores or like, was that a lot you? No, that's the thing. We didn't have any experience and we all learned and failed and learned and grew. And just, I asked friends that had stores, you know, I asked, I was talking to Bobby all the time from the hundreds. Bobby hundreds? Um, no way. Yeah, He's everyone, another like, like huge inspiration of mine. That's crazy. Yeah, we talked to, I mean, basically talked to Ian at Kicks Hawaii, who was who then went to Nike as well. It's just like whoever had a store, I had I had I had to ask them questions because there's no way to to know, right? Like unless yeah. you know, unless you've gone through it, but I no one's gone through it. On my so that's almost a testament to the community that comes with all of that, right? Because you had those friends probably just from paying attention to cool things, collecting sneakers, being mm-hmm. a part of the culture. Yeah, yeah. It was it was all definitely um, the people that um, I looked up to and I worked with uh, doing collaborations were the guys that I still know today and we still talk and we still text and just to make sure that we're all in the same you know, we're all kind of still focused, you know, I know that focus becomes like blurred every now and then, but you realize where things need to be. Once Mm -hmm. you realize things are out of focus, you know, it's kind of funny, but you have to get out of focus to get back into it. You know, that's oddly prolific. And I love that. Yeah. Um, Another thing that I think about when I look at like groups like yourself and like, you know, you say Bobby hundreds for me, I was, I'm probably like a little generation, I'm 30 now, so I'm a little bit behind y'all age-wise, but I also grew up in Florida, and a lot of this was happening on the West Coast, and it was very easy to look to that and almost idolize, like, wow, they're setting the bar, and seeing like the cars that they were building on like NWP for life, and all these car forms that were posted, and now later on, come to find out all these people were just friends doing their best, but Mm -hmm. something that I think about in an encouraging way is I think a lot of the generation right now are building these networks that you speak of and not realizing it. Like it's easy to idolize those circles that have proven it and have done it. And it feels like this, like, I don't want to say cool kid club because everybody's pretty nice, but there's like the generation ahead of you that's done these amazing things. But I sometimes stop and think, I'm like, there's the current generation right now that will tell the stories just like you and have those same cool networks. So I think that that's a reminder Mm -hmm. to just like build cool shit with your friends. Exactly. Exactly. You know, the, 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 the one thing, I guess the one thing that I could kind of say where, um, what you're talking on is a lot of the friends that I I grew up with, um, was, uh, we're all skaters, right? we we, I, I designed for FTC skateboarding. I was like oh, one of their first what? designers. And 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 everyone around my town were like skating for FTC, right? And all yeah. these guys end up 
one, you know, Mike Carroll started girl skateboards and Javante Turner and then uh, Chico Brenes, all these guys I grew up with, they would all go to my you parties. You know Mike Carroll? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> really ridiculous. It's like, um, you know, like like Mike, uh, you know, like Nick uh, from uh, Diamond. Yeah. Like we all kind of were all in this weird little skate company just hanging out pretty much all the time and to di- till this day you know we still talk to each other which is kind of cool that's that's really crazy that's like some malcolm gladwell outliers something <laughs> i don't know about like a core group of that but that's yeah. I, I don't know that's encouraging to hear because i think that a lot of people younger people building stuff are probably not realizing that they're building those networks that will oh, later yeah. on be talked about uh, just like that. Yeah. Um, so to fast forward, Illus was huge. It was massive. You scaled this incredibly big thing. It made such a wave on not only car culture, but I believe like you just like any type of like alternative culture. Like it was a very big thing and I still is. Yeah. Uh, but recently, well, bring me up to recent. Take me there. So, so I think uh, with Illus, I think we, we were never labeled this streetwear brand. Because we were dabbling in all these little things, these little subcultures where I kind of didn't want to be labeled as a streetwear brand. Although we do a collab with Medicom or we do a collab with Beast by Dre. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, it's fun to not be labeled streetwear because you, you're open to, to doing anything, to be honest, mm-hmm. you know. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, Illust right now is definitely growing. You know, I think ever since I got uh, partners, um, maybe just two years ago. Um, there's, there's so much, there's so much growth where you're like, Oh man, that we need more people. You need, you know what I mean? Like the team in Manila is like 50 people, which is crazy. And you know, like it's a Hong Kong company too. So there, we have partners in China. We have, it, it just, just became big. And I think, um, seeing this growth you're just like wow this is this is pretty amazing but at the same time i i i feel like uh felt for me i felt like i think it's a good time for me to to do other things you know what i mean like uh when a friend of mine uh ken block he started dc shoes yeah right? just <laughs> ken and, block that's all and um and i you know i actually texted him and i was like dude so what happens when you leave your company you know, uh, what did you do? You know, like, so basically he, he stayed on for a couple of years and then, um, you know, he's still kind of an am- ambassador for DC, but at yeah. the same time, you know, I think it, it's, it's cool that he's able to create other things. Like he created Hoonigan and he created his own motorsports brand because of it. You know, he actually came to my warehouse, um, and asked me for advice on how, wh- what, do, what is this all about? You know, try to figure it out. And then next year he's doing crazy videos all over the place. And it's pretty fun. It was, it was it's very awesome to see his growth in, in his new chapter in life, you know? Dude. That, yeah. I didn't know you were close. With, yeah. That's. Yeah. You know what? Here's yeah. something that nobody knows is, you know, the San Francisco episode of, um, you know, the Hoonigan thing. I'm not. Okay. Yeah. Jim Monster. Connor. Yeah, Jim Kana. Yeah. So he he filmed that in San Francisco, but they used my tow truck and they would take apart the car in my warehouse every night. It was so crazy. Like his team would basically take apart the car, like take apart the engine, yeah. and put it back within like six hours. It was it was amazing. Holy crap. So you were like the garage pit stop for the San Francisco one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Wow impacting culture in every single way that's <laughs> yeah, crazy we keep, so we kept that one on low but uh some people know about it that's cool that yeah. damn okay so yeah like you just got to a point where you wanted to challenge yourself for more growth right like mm-hmm. yeah that's so interesting yeah i mean i think i i had this idea of trying to move on um about a year ago and my partners were like, let's just, you know, let's just figure it out. Let's just try and, you know, like um, figure out how this transition could be. And and I'm at that point right now. So I'm super stoked, you know, like I'll be working for this gaming company and going to, man, just going to make everything super awesome for them as well. 
Dude, well, I'm so I'm so excited to hear about this because I think that there's people, I mean, dude, like yourself, you mentioned Ken, what a great example, but it's like I feel like people like y'all can apply the same principles you've learned to several different things and impact so much. And I, I really respect it. Like, I think from the outside, you could be like, why would you ever leave this? It's huge. You're set. And you're like, well, yeah, but it's it's progress. It's growth. It's what yeah. you need to be excited and inspired. I think so, it's individual growth. I think um, I could definitely still do a list and fat list and be super pumped on every single collaboration I bring to the table. And I still do bring collaborations and awesomeness to the brand but yeah i think personal growth and with 2020 i think a lot of people including myself it, it wasn't just like a, a a year to reflect it's like a, it was like a year to reflect on your entire life not just <laughs> you know what i mean like you're, you're sitting Dude, yeah. there at home i mean i was a, i was coming to my warehouse which was still only it's just five miles away and no one's here but you're reflecting back um, on your entire life, which is yeah. cool. You know, I think a lot of people ha were able to do that and see what they wanted to do in the next five years, you know, because you never get this break ever. We will no. never get that break again. I know. It's like this wild, like mm -hmm. it was terrible and it was a very like weird circumstance, but mm -hmm. those who stopped and realized what that was and like that moment of like, this is a once in a lifetime experience. It's it, it was, it is, it still is. And yeah. um, in January, I kind of mentioned that I'm ready to do something different and yeah. they were all for it, you know? And then I reached out to all my friends in the industry, which is cool, you know, just kind of ask them questions. And, you know, I was thinking about this, this and that, and super stoked that um, the offers and here I am. <laughs> That's great. So what yeah. ultimately got you excited? Like, where did you explain where you're at now and what you're looking to the future to do? Yeah. So basically what, what I'll be doing now is um, what I'm doing with Illis, but at the same time, um, I'll be, um, brand building and also uh, creative directing all these new game titles, which is really exciting. You know, like trying to figure out ways to engage people um, and keep them in the game. You know, I think I have so many great ideas. Oh, I can't even spill them out, but man, you, you'll see, you'll see change soon in, um, in a lot of cool things that, um, I mean, I'll, I'll probably announce it on my Instagram or, you know, something but uh, it'll be cool. Yeah, this this probably I, I really won't can't go talk live. off too much. But uh, I think I'm, I think I'm just super excited about the future. Yeah. So so gaming, you'll be focusing on gaming. Yeah, gaming and lifestyle and trying to mix the two. You know, like trying to mix, um, you know, real life stuff and virtual stuff yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's that is such an exciting space and um it's so funny but that movie Ready Player 1 uh -huh. it was such a movie where you're like wow like it painted this picture maybe hopefully not like the desolate slums part where you <laughs> I like hopefully life in real life is still good but like seeing yeah. these virtual worlds take place and people interacting and all of these things like to embrace that side of the future I think is really cool. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, you, I can see it, you know, I have three kids and my youngest, uh, he's 10 and he recently started making music uh, oh, cool. with his DJ, um, in, I, I think he's in Chicago. No, he's in the, in Virginia, uh, DJ Inferno. I don't know if you know him, but he's like, man, this guy's like a one man band, like got keyboards here, drum, everything, just making awesome beats and making music. And he's taking classes from him and, the way the kids are these days and how fast they pick up things. And I've, I've never been this quick on, on the computer. Right. But just watching my son, um, remixing, uh, music is amazing. Right. And like, like you said earlier, his friends that will be doing this in the next five years with him, these are like friends for life, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like these Crazy. moments and this core group that he develops will be his come up circle and everybody will have that success. Yeah. Damn. So 
what an exciting like because I, I really was curious to hear your perspective of like what you're excited about right now because in a sense like you kind of won the game at least as far as like like you know you built a successful brand you did collabs with everything that you probably wanted to you've been able to own the coolest cars and something that I really respect in your journey is it feels like you did such a good job of aligning with the things you were truly passionate about mm -hmm. like your brand was such an impact on automotive which is something that you're passionate about and you always brought like a cool sense of design which is clearly something you had a background in so it's like now in a sense that you've won that game it's like what are you focusing on like what are you excited about because like i still see that spark in you like you're still yeah. excited yeah no i i i'm i'm excited off everything that's the yeah. funny thing it's like when someone shows me something that they've just worked on and and i it kind of blows my mind how other people think too you know because they always say oh man i got inspiration by you i'm like man this is inspiring me now <laughs> you yeah. know so, so it's just like you're not trying to level up each other. You're just trying to grow, you know? And I think um, growth is definitely like the key to success. And, and the, the one thing I can say is just as long as you're um, consistent at, at the one thing that you really want to focus on, there's always going to be success for you no matter what. That's huge. And that was literally like the next question that I had for you is like, as you look back at the journey and all of the things, the accomplishments, but also like the struggles, like what mm -hmm. is that advice to the people that have that vision, but are still just like on that grind. And I feel like that is great advice to that. Yeah, totally, man. Like I didn't realize, uh, somebody mentioned it to me. It's like, Hey man, just make sure that you're consistent on whatever you do. I'm like, okay, think about that 10 years later. Like, okay, I really just focused on the things that I really wanted to do. I didn't want to do mm -hmm. anything else. You know, like I wasn't trying to invent a new screwdriver or, you know what I mean? Like I really just focused on things that I actually like doing mm -hmm. and, and people caught on, you know, like, oh man, they really do it well in this category. You know, we're not trying to go outside of our realm, but whatever I was like focused on or, my coworkers really like doing, then let's go try this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Another question with that is like along the ways as you've built and grown and scaled everything, have you, have you, how do I word this? I think a struggle that people run into is the unexpected problems or the challenges that aren't your passion, right? So it's like you build a brand but then you have to figure out retail or employees or scaling or this is and that's. And like, I'm always curious the way that the entrepreneurial folks have dealt with that. Like, did you take the time to learn that yourself? Did you instantly just be like, I need to find the best person at this? Like, how did you grow while your passion was starting to work? So I think um, you definitely need to have uh, coworkers and workers and people that you work with or partner with that have expertise in these other things that you don't want to deal with like mm -hmm. finance and money. And you know what I mean? Like figuring out how to source or where to source. So, so I think we're very fortunate now after 10 years or yeah, it took 10 years or eight years that we we've gotten these partners that help us uh, in things that I don't want to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so because I have partners, uh, I just focus on creative Well, let them focus on the harder parts, you know, but for them, it's not hard because that's what they love doing. You know, like the money parts easy for them. Uh, the, you know, finding distribution is easy for the other guys. You know, like I think definitely have to stay in your lane because what happens when, if you're a creative, you lose that creativity because you're trying to focus on the books or you're trying to, you know what I mean? That's Dude, the hardest yeah. part. You know, I, I think, if if I was just if someone was to ask me how do I do this, I say just hire someone to do it, you know, yeah. because it's not worth your time. You're trying. You're the creative here. You're the one that's why people are buying your stuff. Don't waste your time, you know, figuring out your books or doing things that you don't want to be doing. I, I mean, like it's hard to do too. that, but it's money, you know. 
Yeah, like, I like what you said too, though, is like, even though it's boring or hard for you, it doesn't mean that it is for somebody else, right? Like you're a creative, you like designing, you don't want to deal with finance, for example. Yeah. Certain people don't want to design and they don't have that spark and numbers just make sense. Yeah. So when you hire them, they're like, yeah, this is what I do. This is easy. Let's yeah. go. They're, they're experts. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're the experts in their game. So. Yeah. Not- no, that's interesting. I just, I think that that's. I think that that's an interesting challenge that I've heard people talk about, at like just like that scaling and especially probably for a lot of my listeners, they're probably working on a project, but at a spot where maybe they don't have the income or the the resource to start hiring that team. And it's in, it's just inspiring and encouraging to hear that as you do continue to grow and as you prove that vision, that the ability to bring other people on that are great at what they do will come in. Yeah. I think the hardest super hardest part is when we had 300 people we were you know 300 stores that we were servicing i think the hardest part was the books you know trying to keep books on that you know and i think that's when you have to spend that money and 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 because it's going to be worth it in the end you don't you're not going to make mistakes like we did (laughs) but (laughs) you know (laughs) i think I think spending that extra cash um, is definitely going to help anyone in this situation. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's great advice. And it's like, again, it it hits different when it comes from someone like yourself that has like real experience behind them and real brands to prove it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think another thing, um, what's different is when you're working for a company like say Nike or whoever, Adidas mm-hmm. or whatever, the budget, there's a budget, but at the same time, you know that they they have the budget versus yeah. a, a, a guy that's just growing and brand new, brand new company. A lot of, a lot of people are following now and you're selling so much. Uh, you don't realize that, shoot, I actually need someone to help me manage this. Yeah. It's the hardest part in, to realize this, but once you do, once you realize, man, I'm, I'm in, I'm in a predicament right here. Mm-hmm. people will definitely help you because they know that you're making money. You know, yeah. you just have to ask. That's the only thing. Yeah. Wow. No, that's cool. That's, I, I appreciate you sharing that kind of side of it because I think like, again, it just, it has a different level of uh, impact when it's come from somebody who's really done the thing at a level. So I think another part of your story that's interesting is not only did you have the crazy success with Illust and Fatlace and the brands that you're closely tied to, but if I'm not mistaken, you're also kind of like the behind the scenes plug for a lot of other stuff, right? Like you've worked on a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Yeah, totally. What's some I... stuff that people don't know about? What are some things that you've worked on that are a little quieter? So, um... I introduced Rod, Emery, and Momo to make that one crazy Porsche back oh. in the day. Yeah. So that that's a, that's like a car thing, but people yeah, don't, it really is. don't really care about that. But um, I do. I helped uh I help out K Swiss uh, on a lot of projects. Really? I stopped doing that recently, but um Maserati has hit me up. I I've kind of consulted for them uh Didn't on their new you... launch. Didn't you bring RWB to the States? Yeah. Yeah. I brought RWB. It's a, it's a Porsche tuner brand. I brought it in 2000, I don't know, 11, maybe a while ago, but okay. yeah, like random things, you know, like right now I'm actually working on, um, an app called suplexed. Um, it's like an aggregator app basically finds the cheapest price for you. And if you buy mm-hmm. through their web, through their app, they, um, they get a kickback. The company gets a kickback, but you get the best price, you know, like whether it's on stock X or wherever it's at eBay or, you know, who oh, knows where. Cool. So like almost like the, the same, or I think of like that, the plugin, like honey, but for mm-hmm. more like streetwear to say a simple yeah, term. It would yeah. be more for sneakers. Yeah. Yeah. So I help them out. And I help another uh, brand that's on the rise right now. you You'll be talking about this in like about a year, maybe, but a company called Deadstock. Okay. Um, they're another sneaker app company that they're just going to kill it. This guy 
has loads of money. He's just putting it all in, you know, like he's like me, just put it all in. Let's he's just bullish go. on it. Yeah. Yeah. He's very bullish. Um, he's buying so, up everything right now. So it's cool. A question with that, like when you come in, like these brands that you listed, like you don't have to be a car person. You don't have to be a style fashion person. Like that's, those are names. That's real names. Like what, what have you been able to do? Like now I'm so curious, right? Because people listening to this, like, it's cool to hear that when you come in and work with these companies, like what are some of the things you get to do? Or like, what are some of the things you, you pay attention to and work with them on? Um, well, so, so they kind of come with me for advice more than anything, you know, like if, if somebody wants to work with someone else, they, they just say, Hey Mark, do you know these people? And I go, yeah, totally. Let me make a, a connection. And, you know, like they sometimes give me finders fees and stuff. Like I've, I've I put together a ton of collaborations for antisocial back in the day. Oh, um, cool. Cause Neek came from Yeah, Stussy? he came from Susie, yep. Yeah. Um, I've known Neek forever. He used to blog for me on Fat Lace, which is funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. That was that that's kind of how we we've known each other. Like um, yeah, no, we I, I work with a lot of things, like help people connect basically i've been helping people connect for a while but it, it's just all for fun too you know like if there's something that can i can benefit from then cool but it's mostly you know like i just help people out i feel like that's been like my latest endeavor in life yeah, my you know like later on in life i'm like i just love helping people out which is cool i love that because i think that once people I think in the early days, and I can speak to this from like my own personal experience, maybe you can too. It's like, it's a little hard to think about other people, not because you're a selfish asshole, but because you're just like, dude, I need to survive. I need to pay rent. I need to pay my bills. And you're just like tunnel vision. But the people that I respect the most, and I've seen it with like the examples of success is like, once you figure out how to pay your bills and your lane is carved out, that purpose to help other people and connect those pieces and that kind of becomes more prominent. And I feel like I see those people like yourself that do that. And it's just so cool, right? Because that makes culture advance and evolve. Yeah, yeah, you have to. I think um, just giving giving the keys to people is, man, that's, they'll, they'll never forget that, you know? Yeah. And if they succeed, they'll always be super, you know, uh, thankful, which is awesome. Ooh, here's a good question. Yeah. So someone like yourself, right? If somebody's listening to this and they're like, dude, if only I could get the keys, someone like yourself yeah. is given an opportunity where the keys are given to them. What is your advice to them? Like when you're given that shot? Yeah. I think for me, uh, I just always tell them they have to, they have to focus, you know, like there's no if ands or buts, right? Like if someone's talking shit on a forum, let them talk crap. You know, that's, that's good publicity, I guess. But, you know, I think don't, don't get caught up in the mix, you know, don't get caught up in the, in the hoopla of the craziness, just focus. If you focus, doesn't matter what anyone else is saying. Cause eventually, you know, they're going to be like, damn, this guy really pushed hard. They're going to remember that. Oh my God, he didn't care what anyone said about him. Cause yeah. that's his thing, you know? But I'm saying like you like specifically, like say you take X kid, right? Like say Timmy hits you up and you're like, I have a good feeling about you. Yeah. And like, what's, what's the best move for Timmy? Like he's given the keys. What, like how, what as a now person who is able to connect those pieces, like what do you respect the most? What do you want to see out of the people that are given those opportunities or that you would give an opportunity to? I think, I think my, my one thing is as long as they stay humble, it's the best. That's the only thing that I ask for if I am going to help people out, you know, yeah. as long as they're staying humble, because the humble, the humbleness is that's, that's, what's going to shine amongst anyone, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, that's I mean, cool. like we were talking about flossing you, it's, you'll see it in the beginning with a lot of people, then they realize, oh man, what am I doing? But if you continue to do it, it's not good. It's not a good look, you know? Yeah. Like you get like, you're like, get your allowance of it, right? Like you get that window where it's like, all right, cool. Yeah. We're excited. You had your come up and then it's like, all right, settle down. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. 
Dude, I feel like you covered so, so much here. Like, I'm so grateful for you taking the time with this. Like, I can't tell you. And I think that, I, I hope that everybody listening understands and sees the value. Like, again, this podcast was supposed to be more than just music. And having the honor of having someone on like yourself who's built such big things and worked with such big people, like this advice is so valuable. And it's so cool that you're down to pay it forward and come on shows like this and share it. Yeah, totally, man. I, I enjoy doing this stuff. And, you know, if you want to DM me, you totally can. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll reply. Yeah, where can people find you? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm basically on, on Instagram most of the time. But, yeah, you know, yeah, they could hit me up on Instagram. I think you could put it on the credits. Yeah, I, I got you on show notes. Yep. Easy. Cool. cool. Well, thank you again so much.